Hi, I'm Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. It's day 20 of the LG G Flex Challenge. Now, I've been using this device extensively the past 19 days, using it as my personal driver, doing my email, YouTube videos, playing games, uh, trying to play Flappy Bird, but that was after we took it down from the App Store. And uh, today we'll be talking about the performance and the software of the G Flex. Basically, this is running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. It's not Kit Kat's. And a 2.3 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 800 quad core processor uh, and basically an LG G Flex. So it's going to be an interesting episode. It's going to be all about performance and software of the G Flex. So also let me know what you would like to see in future LG G Flex challenges. Also, if you want to see other devices in a 30 day challenge, just let me know with a comment below and a like of this video and let's get started. All right, so here we have the LG G Flex. Now this is running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. It's not KitKat, it will be coming very soon or so LG tells us. But let me start talking about things that I do like about the LG G Flex. Now we start off with a notification menu. Again, very similar to the G2 in terms of layout, almost completely identical. Uh, there is a cool feature in the actual menu system for all your quick settings for your toolbar anyway, you can select what you want to show up and also the position of where the application. So if you use battery saver so much, you can actually move it all the way up. And so if we move it up here, we go back. And now battery saver is the first option we have. Now the second one is called Q slide. Now generally I don't like this because one, it's kind of limited to what you can actually run and there's a much better multi-window-esque application that we'll talk about in just a little bit. So uh, Q slide anyways gives you options for like simple applications like videos, phone, messaging, email, memo, uh, voice mate, file manager, calculator, calendar. Again, very simple applications. You can also edit these and uh, you can list whatever you want in order or which ones you actually want to show up. Now, one annoying thing that I don't like about this is, you see how there's two settings icons? Which one would you push to go into the settings? Well, if you didn't look high enough, you would push this one and boom, it takes you to a volume controller. Uh, same problem on the G2. This one's actually your settings. They kind of moved it from, it was actually right above the uh, settings for the volume to this one. So it makes a little bit more sense, still kind of confusing. I'm not exactly sure why we need a settings for audio on your toolbar, but I guess you can live with it there. Now let's get into the settings of a G Flex here. Now there's a couple of cool things that you could do. Now the first one I wanna talk about is one-handed operation. It's kind of an odd thing to see because this is a large phone. It's six inches in terms of size, uh, but a really cool little feature here is swipe front touch buttons to move positions. So if I was using it on my right hand and I need all the buttons to go this way, boom. I can actually you know, just do that and I will have my home button, my back button, and my menu button right over the right hand corner. So if I'm using my phone one handed, I can actually get access to all of these right from there. So a uh, really cool option for anyone who wants to use this one handed. Again, this is a pretty large phone. My hands are pretty small, uh, but this is a very big phone. So uh, the second one I wanna talk about is the multi-window uh, feature. And you actually use it by holding down the back button and there you go. So it, it's a little bit different from the multi-window on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. So we'll drag up Chrome on the top, or we'll try to drag up Chrome. So we'll put Chrome there, and we want to run YouTube on the bottom. And there we go. So uh, very similar to multi-window, almost identical to multi-window actually. And we'll go search here. We'll just search phone dog. We'll go to phone dog here, and then we'll browse the web while we're looking at this. And you know, it's very similar to the multi-window experience on TouchWiz. Again, it's very fluid. There's not really any lag. We'll skip this ad. And there you go. Very similar to the multi-window aspect on TouchWiz. Now, in terms of performance, this has a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core processor. Running applications like Google Chrome, for example, pretty simple. Now, PhoneDog.com is a very heavy website, especially for mobile Google Chrome. And phones like even the Note 3 has uh, a lot of trouble running your website very smoothly. And this phone, again, it's pretty quick overall. If you scroll really quickly, you can get it to lock up a couple times. That's just something with Google Chrome. It happens on almost all Android devices. And one thing about the battery is it is a non-removable battery. It's a pretty large 3,000 milliamp hour battery. It lasts 
almost all day. I mean, I've been using this thing for almost two days straight and I have uh, about 50% left of battery. Now I am kind of guilty of going back to my iPhone for a couple of hours only to use iOS 7.1 because it just rolled out today. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's been a very almost fault-free experience in terms of software. Now, there's only a couple of hiccups when it comes to multitasking or running a lot of applications. Uh, I think this phone is a little too quick for its own software. I think I can say that because it is a very fast quad-core processor and it has two gigabytes of RAM. So it's very fast and very powerful, but uh, sometimes the animations can get ahead of itself and the phone will actually lock up. Now, I've had this phone lock up about three times so far in the past 19 days. And when I mean lock up, I mean I had to shut this phone down to get it to unlock because the screen was completely unresponsive. So that might be a little wearisome for a couple people. I'm not exactly sure if it's just my device that's affected, but I have noticed that. Now other performance in terms of bench testing here, this is a Geekbench 3, a pretty standard bench tester for basically Android, iOS, any device you can name. Uh, I got 868 for single core and 2245 for your multi-core thread. Uh, again, it just kind of shows you the power coming off here. One processor, four cores at 2.27 gigahertz, basically 2.3 and two gigabytes of RAM. Pretty quick uh, for, for general. Most phones will get around the 700 mark. I think the Note 3 gets a slight faster score on the multi-core thread score uh, but other than that daily experiences nothing to be worried about other than those really weird uh, kinks and the software especially for multitasking but other than that it's been a very good device so also let me know what you guys want to see from the LG G Flex challenge in future videos you know we only have what nine days left in the G Flex challenge so let me know what you would like to see uh, but for now my name is Marco Hanna from phonedog.com you can follow me on Twitter at phonedog underscore Marco and also send me questions via Twitter I usually respond to about 90% of tweets that I get on there and I will see you guys in the next video.